So this is a hummingbird feeder, and I was hoping to get a shot of a hummingbird feeding out of it, but they haven't shown up, so... Um, I'm gonna do a video about how I accidentally broke my grandma's hummingbird feeder. And so I got a plastic bottle, and it didn't really thread in right here very well, so um, I was worried that the weight of the liquid was going to just push the bottom piece off of the plastic part that screws in. But then, while I was sitting there thinking about it, I realized that the force that the liquid exerts on this tray where the nectar sits doesn't really depend on how much liquid is in the reservoir. It's a very counterintuitive, but uh, very interesting math problem. So, to the whiteboard. I want to ask the question, does the force on this bottom tray depend on a variable I'm going to call H? In other words, if you put more nectar up in the reservoir, does this tray, which uh, threads on to the reservoir, have to hold up more of the weight? And the answer is no. So um, to give you some intuition about that, we're going to go do some experiments. Do a brief. Uh, rundown of the experiment we're about to do and what I want to do is isolate part of the system at this interface between the nozzle of the reservoir and the tray and so what we're gonna do with that is we're just gonna get a cup similar to this and we're gonna fill it up with water and uh, go outside and show you a really cool experiment what I'm going to do now is explain, uh, with a little experiment, how the hummingbird feeders force times distance, or, <clears throat> I mean, work. Hopefully in a more intuitive way. So if I take and invert this, and let go of the styrofoam plate, the atmosphere pushes against the plate with atmospheric pressure which is a lot more than how much the water is pushing against the plate. So the plate has a tendency to stick to the cup. Now if you had an uh, actual hummingbird feeder, there'd be a small gap in between here and the plate would be threaded onto the reservoir. And so what I was talking about on the whiteboard is how much force does the plate need to, um, or does the reservoir need to exert on the plate to hold it up there. So it's a slightly different problem, but what we're doing is we're isolating the system at the interface between the nozzle of the reservoir and the liquid that is in the reservoir. That's good. I want to explain a little bit more about how hummingbird feeders work. You have flowers and little places where the hummingbirds can like land and then they put their beaks down through a hole in the center of the flower and they have little tongues with uh, grooves in the in the middle of them that uh, help uh, induce capillary action and they lap up the nectar similar to how a dog laps up water. Um, so then the fluid level here falls until the, the liquid falls to the point where air can come in through these holes and it's at atmospheric pressure, that's important, and then the air goes through this nozzle and bubbles up in here and then some of the liquid from the reservoir goes down and replaces what they drank so that they have a constant supply of high energy sugar water to drink. So, um, the reason that atmospheric pressure is important is because we want to be able to prove that we can isolate the two systems 
and bef um, the experiment I did with the cup had atmospheric pressure pushing on a small piece of paper right here. Um, forget the paper. <laughs> um, if I took this tray and put it right here and just had the water, you might want to argue with me, but what about this column of water hanging out above here? Well, the water right here is at atmospheric pressure, and the water right here is at atmospheric pressure. And the reason that I know that the water right here is at atmospheric pressure is because water, when it's not moving around, if you go horizontally in, a, in some water, if you're right here and the pressure is um, higher than the pressure right here, then the water would want to move over and so that the pressure, pressure is equalized. The pressure is not uh, the same vertically, but horizontally. We know that the pressure is the same because the water is not moving around. So we should be able to take this tray and think about it in an isolated system and try to calculate the pressure at the bottom of the tray and not even have to worry about all of the water in the column up there. So pressure um, equals density of the liquid. Well, I have the equation written out over here because I thought ahead and knew I wouldn't be able to write it out. <laughs> uh, this part of the equation for the force is density of the liquid times the gravitational constant times the height. And since we don't have to worry about the height of this, we just have to worry about this other height. So I'll put a little 2 in here to indicate that I'm talking about this height. And then pressure times area is force. So this little term right here is just going to be the area of the bottom of the container. So what does matter is the dimensions of the container that the birds are drinking out of, but not the dimensions of the reservoir. That comes into play when you calculate the tension in this, and you want to design your hook and whatever to be able to hold up the weight of the reservoir.